Mr. Chairman here, my participants uh, of the panel discussion, ladies and gentlemen, and my dear friends. I stand here to speak about engaging the Buddha in today's world. So I will try my best and through my little speech, if I'm able to help only one individual also, if I'm able to benefit only one individual also, I think I will serve the purpose of engaging the Buddha in today's world. But before I begin, I'd like to make a short prayer. Enthused by great compassion, you taught the Immaculate Dharma to dispel all distorted views. To you, Buddha Gautama, I pay homage. Enthused by great compassion, you taught the Immaculate Dharma to dispel all perverted views. To you, Buddha Gautama, I pay homage. Enthused by great compassion, you taught the Immaculate Dharma to dispel all distorted views. To you, Buddha Gautama, I pay homage. A few years ago, when I was going through a very difficult time in my life, I began to feel very confused and lost. So I looked everywhere if I could find a solution for it. Then I came across the word compassion and self-compassion and began to look in Google to understand it. Later, after a few months, I went in search of it and attended a short course in a Buddhist monastery in Nepal. I stumbled upon compassion again and found out that it is an integral part of Buddhist practice. It is so integral that every action of body, mind and speech should be of a compassionate one. The intention should be compassion. I, it was extremely difficult, but I accepted the challenge. And ever since, I tried to incorporate it in my day-to-day -day life. And as I started to progress, it started to change my life completely. How did it help? Scientists have proven that the practice of compassion leads to the release of hormones that are responsible for happiness and for the well-being of an individual, both physiologically and psychologically. Hormones like oxytocin, which is called the love hormone, serotonin and endorphins are released in the body. And these hormones are responsible for happiness. Because these hormones, they reduce stress, they reduce anxiety and depression, and therein they improve the neurophysical and immune system of an individual. So now, what is compassion? Let us begin with that. In general, compassion is a trait that each and every individual, including animals, possess it. It is a feeling of love and affection that we see very, very conventionally between parents and their children, between friends, between people who love each other, husband and wife, etc. It is a basis of humanity. But, and also it is a, a feeling of love that we feel for people that we care about or we love. But it is a compassion that is biased and conditional. But according to Buddhism, which in Sanskrit, compassion is called karuna. And it is synonymous to love, to affection, to kindness, to generosity of spirit, and gentleness. And it is unbiased and unconditional for every being. So that is the difference between the compassion that we know and the compassion that Buddhism has taught me. Now can we develop this altruistic compassion or the unbiased, unconditional love for every being? The answer is yes. It can be developed. And how do we develop it? It can be developed through a gradual process 